chapter we're going to talk about more reactions of aldehydes and ketones. The first general reaction we're going to look at is called alpha substitution. So what we're going to have here is a carbonyl group. So we have carbonyl here. And then we can um, essentially number next to that carbonyl. So right adjacent to it, we would call this the alpha position. So with a base present, the base can come over and grab a hold of that hydrogen atom right there. All right, when it does that, these electrons then come down and live on your carbon. And then what you form is you form this intermediate called an enolate. Right? ATE is an indication of a negative charge. Right? So you have an enolate. Now, what you have here is a resonance stabilized enolate. Right? So it's actually going to be a nucleophile. Now it turns out that the oxygen and the carbon can both act as a nucleophile. So in this case, here you have the negative charge on carbon. But of course we have a resonance structure. It takes them over here to our carbon-carbon bond and then takes a set of electrons and our carbon-oxygen and pulls them up to our oxygen. So let's put in our oxygen over here. And there's your oxygen with a minus charge. All right, so both this carbon atom here and this oxygen have the potential to be nucleophiles. Usually in the sophomore level organic, you typically see only the carbon atom as the nucleophile here. Uh, the next step of this reaction is that there's some electrophile that's uh, being added, right? And then you would have your carbon, right? The one that we have here, acting as your nucleophile and bonding to that electrophile at your alpha position. So we call that alpha substitution. Now let's do a little review here of acidity and pKa's. So we know from first semester and from general chemistry that we can look at acidity based on bronsted lowry acid base equation. So in that situation we have a base here and an acid, right? And we're coming over and grabbing that H and doing this. And so your base becomes your conjugate acid, and your acid becomes your conjugate base. And then we can write an equilibrium expression for this also, right? So our KEQ for that above reaction is this expression. Now, remember when we want to compare strengths of acids to each other, we have to kind of use a common base. And that base that we use is water. So, for the acid-base reaction down here below, we have water right, reacting with all these different acids, HA, right? And then we're gonna take that set of electrons and put them over here. That'll give us H3O plus and A minus, right? And then your Ka for this, right, combines the Basically, the, the H2O goes with the KQ to give you your Ka, but you end up with the concentration of your conjugate base A minus times your hydronium ion concentration divided by the acid concentration. And remember that for this Ka, right, a large Ka indicates that we favor the products because the products are in the numerator. So if it's a big number, then that numerator is large. But in OCHEM, we usually look at pKa's. So pKa's make large Ka's become smaller pKa's. So a small pKa indicates that we favor our products. We have a stronger acid. And so our KQ here is equal to 10 raised to the difference of the pKa of the product acid minus the pKa of the reactant acid. Now, KQ can be large or small or kind of intermediate. So if it's greater than about a thousand, we say, well, we favor our products. If it's less, right, than one thousandth, then we favor our reactants. And then if it lies between these two, then we say it's near or at equilibrium. So here we have a table listing 
one of the common PKAs of the various acids that we've seen through the semester. If we zoom down here and take a look in the middle, we'll see the three main compounds that we're going to be looking at in this chapter. So first over here we have an aldehyde, which is a CH2. H with a minus charge here. Next we have here a ketone with our carbonyl and a CH3. And then lastly down here we have an ester with a carbon and a negative charge. And we'll make that just an R group. Now between these three compounds we can see the PKAs range from 17 to, to 20 to 24.5. Now, remember that the stability of the conjugate base is what largely dictates whether or not we have a stronger or a weaker acid, right? So 17 means that we have a stronger acid than 25. So when we look at what's happening in this um, enolate over here, we just have one group over here on this side, right? And that H right there, it does not really donate electron density to our carbonyl. Right, so remember, if we had something electron withdrawing, that would make the conjugate base more stable. And if we look over here, here's an R group. So if you recall, right, alkyl groups, they donate electron density, All right? And because of this, it destabilizes, so we'll just say N destabilizes our conjugate base. And lastly, when we look over here at our ester, so this side of the molecule already is involved in resonance. So the fact that we have resonance already over here kind of detracts from the fact that we need to help accommodate this negative charge on this side. So we'll just simply say here that at this position, the resonance competes right with the enolate resonance. Now, the other thing I want to uh, point out to you is this useful little chart. And if you're a biochem major, um, or even a you know a chem major, you, as you go on, you'll you'll start seeing these delta Gs, especially in biochem for like metabolic pathways and stuff. So remember that your delta G here is equal to minus n R T lin K, or minus 1.36 log base 10 K. Now, if we rearrange that we can get the following expression, right? And if our K is greater than one, then the delta G ends up being a negative number. And if K is less than one, then delta G is, is a positive number, right? So with our delta G down here below, if we look at this little table, this is a good thing to keep in mind. If delta G is about three, when we look at that, you get percent products that's about um, 0.6%, right, at your, when you allow equilibrium to be established. All right, so then at the other end of that, if it's negative three, then it's actually 0.6% less than 100. So you have 99.4%. So delta Gs that are about negative three are almost to completion, right? And zero gets you essentially your 50-50. You're almost perfectly at equilibrium there. So it's a nice little table to remember as you go through and progress through you know, your upper division classes and stuff. Now let's take a look at the acidity of these carbonyl um, compounds, enolates here. So it's, it's our alpha positions that are primarily going to be the most acidic. And part of that's because of resonance, right? So if we look over here at this carbon, here we have a CH2 and an H, right? So if we look at that top pathway, that would be our flow of electrons. And you're ending up here with a negative charge basically stuck there. So there are no additional resonant structures 
that we can use or draw from this, um, this ion. So this is not a pathway that we tend to take here. Now this shoulder over here is an alpha position and this little corner over here is also another alpha position. And the FPK is around 20-ish or so. So we can take a look at each of those positions. So if we come over here and move this direction, right? So the base would deprotonate that, that side shoulder. In that case, we end up with our negative charge here, right? And then we have a resonance structure that does this, right? And then because in this original structure over here, we have free rotation, right? We get this guy to, to some lesser extent, right? And then the other thing we can do is we can, we can deprotonate here. So we'll look at this as our other pathway. And if we do that, we get our negative charge here, and we plop our electrons over to give us this other resonant structure. So the point here is that when we deprotonate alpha to that carbonyl, that we have additional resonance structures for the conjugate base, and this stabilizes the conjugate base. And remember, a more stable conjugate base means that we have a more acidic compound that we started with. Thank you.